Senator Tom Cotton, member of the Senate Armed Services and Intelligence Committees, the Arkansas Republican, also a veteran of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Good to have you in focus today, Senator. I'll start with the vice president inside the Senate. That, that detail just coming to us from Peter Ducey. That's very rare, Harris. Normally, the vice president only presides over tie votes, so she can split the vote, or highly consequential votes. Mike Pence presided, for instance, over a few of the Supreme Court nominees. I think this is an example of the Biden administration recognizing that this is a debacle um, that will reverberate for many, many years to come, not just in Afghanistan, but in relations to our adversaries around the world. And they're trying to put a happy face on it. They're trying to spin it for domestic political purposes. But most Americans recognize uh, that Joe Biden is solely responsible for the fiasco we've seen over the last three weeks in Afghanistan. Look, there's been much talk about how we get the remaining Americans and those Afghan uh, citizens who helped our American military out for years and years, how we get them out of there safely. You, you heard the Pentagon spokesperson, John Kirby, saying, we are heartbroken but committed. Uh, first of all, is that enough? No, Harris, it's not. Uh, it's nice to be heartbroken and be better to be committed to getting everyone out like Joe Biden says he was. In fact, Joe Biden promised the Taliban America would leave by August 31. Joe Biden promised American citizens in Afghanistan he would stay until he got them out. When the rubber hit the road, Joe Biden kept his promise to the Taliban and he broke his promise mm. to Americans. Um, what else is not true in this situation? You know, we're looking at the details of those who want to come home now. And so are we left to believe in your estimation? And you sit on such important committees. I know you're looking at the details of this. Some you can share, some you can't. I know you helped some people come back from there just recently. So what do we know about people who were there? Are we just left to believe that they want to be there? Because we're talking to people who really want to come home a couple of American University and Kabul students today, just as an example. Harris, I think this is an example of the Biden administration saying, who are you going to believe, us or your lying eyes mm. and ears? Uh, the young men and women who have been working around the clock in my office and so many other congressional offices to try to get Americans out. We're on the phone as recently as Sunday and yesterday with American citizens and many green card holders as well, trying to get them into the airport. Uh, these are not people who wanted to stay in Afghanistan. Now, of the hundreds that we've left behind, thousands when you add in green card holders probably, some of them may want to stay there. Yes, I'm sure that a handful may want to stay. But that is a fig leaf behind which the Biden administration is hiding for breaking their promise to those citizens in Afghanistan that we promised to stay that we, until we got them out. We didn't do that. It's shameful. I want to get your reaction to this. Mark Schmitz, the father of a fallen Marine, Jared Schmidt, on his meeting with President Biden. Let's watch. I wasn't going to meet with him, um, but then I felt I owed it to my son to uh, at least have some words with him about how I felt. And uh, uh, it, it didn't go well. Um, he talked a bit more about his own son than he did my son, and that, that didn't sit well with me. He wasn't even going to meet with him, but he decided to. What's your reaction? Well, I would not want to criticize any gold star mom or dad or husband or wife who just lost a loved one overseas. And I can certainly understand the frustration of all those gold star families because that attack didn't just happen on Joe Biden's watch. It happened as a direct result of Joe Biden's decisions, the decisions mm. to withdraw in such a disorganized, ill-planned, chaotic fashion. Uh, but I, I would not criticize or comment on any Gold Star family's uh, perceptions of a meeting with the president or anyone else. I, I think they've earned the right through the ultimate sacrifice paid by their family members uh, to say their peace of mind to anyone they want. You know, uh, our audience knows, because you and I have been together on a Memorial Day on the air uh, in the past, that your job at Arlington National Cemetery was one helping families in this type of crisis. Um, what exactly would you say, and, and we'll move on to the next topic after this, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to get your wisdom in this, in this point. Well, those 13 families who lost loved ones last week, I know it's a terrible atrocity. 
and it should have been avoided. It was totally avoidable. Uh, but at the same time, they should be immensely proud of what their sons and daughters, their husbands and wives were doing. They were there trying to protect innocent Americans, to try to save their countrymen. And I've said that to many of the Gold Star families who have lost other uh, troops over the last 20 years, is that we had a tremendous success in Afghanistan. For 20 years, that country was not used as a planning and launching ground for attacks against Americans. They should be proud of what their loved ones accomplished. And, and everyone with whom I've spoken is immensely proud of it, even though they're deeply dismayed by what they've seen over the last three weeks. Senator, I thank you for that. Uh, the crisis in Afghanistan also is raising some concerns about what happens here at home and keeping the rest of us safe, with many people pointing to major security concerns along our southern border with Mexico. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy yesterday on the Faulkner Focus reiterated the need to protect our border, citing other terrorists who have been nabbed by immigration officials. And he raised concerns about who could be among the unvetted refugees fleeing Afghanistan. We have a president who also opened up our border. And this is a border that earlier this year that we have caught numerous people already on the terrorist watch list from Yemen. So when you release those prisoners out of Bagram, where do we think they want to come? Every crisis that has come before this administration, they have failed. Senator Cotton, your reaction? Um, well, it's amazing that we were turning away Afghans who had served alongside our troops over the last 20 years who had American soldiers and veterans vouching for them at the airport in Kabul. Uh, if they could just find a way to get to Mexico, though, we'd wave them right through. That's the Biden administration policy. Um, but I do have grave concerns that Afghanistan will once again become what it was before 9-11, a safe haven and sanctuary for foreign terrorists to plot and launch attacks against uh, Americans. I, I know the Biden administration has touted a so-called over the horizon counterterrorism capability. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that that's more like over the rainbow. I mean, the idea that we will effectively wow. be able to gather intelligence without even an embassy in Kabul, that we'll be able to launch effective terrorist attacks against high level terrorists, as opposed to low level planners or facilitators as happened last week, is mostly a fantasy. And I think anyone in the Department of Defense or our intelligence agencies would tell you the same thing. And if they uh, and the administration go on to tout, well, look at what they just did with the drone hits on ISIS-K, you would say what? Again, uh, we still had a military presence in Afghanistan until yesterday, which helped facilitate some of that intelligence. Uh. But Afghanistan is a uniquely threatening place because it's hundreds of miles away from the ocean. There are no friendly, uh, very few friendly neighbors on its borders, or at least neighbors that are willing to facilitate our operations. That's not the case with almost any other country in the world with terrorists like Yemen or Somalia or Syria, where our military has easy access and we have other presences on the ground to help facilitate intelligence. Exactly how are we going to collect the intelligence, not just on planners or facilitators, but high-level terrorist masterminds, the kind of intelligence we've developed there over the last 20 years that has allowed us to prevent an attack from coming from Afghanistan. It is not going to happen. Afghanistan is once again going to become a safe haven, and it'll be much harder to keep Americans safe from attacks originating in Afghanistan. Yeah, and just to remind everybody, we really aren't talking about the Taliban. We're talking about al-Qaeda and any other of those, you know, bloodthirsty terrorists who will squat in Afghanistan until they can hit us. Uh, we pray that doesn't happen. Senator Cotton, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Harris.